Hey Doodlers, how are you doing? I'm working at the office today in the studio. Um, I'm crouching behind a wall because it's very, very windy. Look, as you see high above. Look, see how windy it is? Um, but at least it's sunny, which is really, really good. This week's episode of Doodle Do It, I'm going to show you how I go about answering an art brief. I've written the book, written the manuscript, how I then go about adding the artwork to the manuscript. So I'm going to be talking to you a bit about the new book, You've Been Werewolfed, which is all about three girls, Tyler, Dylan and Ashley. They live in this town called Happyville. It's an American town, a kind of typical American town full of cheerleaders and jocks and things like that, um, where ev everyone is beautiful. Um, everyone is perfect. These three girls are quite nerdy girls and they kind of, they're a little bit like misfits in this town. So they go around solving all these mysteries. Uh, it's a bit like Scooby-Doo, but instead of these mysteries being ghosts and ghouls, these mysteries are all to do with science. So they use their big brains to solve these mysteries. That's what the, the series is about. And I'm going to show you how I go about illustrating and answering a brief and how I go from turning those simple shapes into a finished character and sending it all off. All the while, not just that, extra bonus edition, not just that, but I'm also going to be reading you a passage from the book as well. So you've got drawing, uh, a sneak peek behind the scenes of being an author, illustrator, uh, and some read and some story time as well. It's pretty good. So let's get back to the drawing board. Let's get doodling. So I'm going to read you a bit of You've Been Werewolf now, while you get to see the drawing being inked in. Um, it's all about three girls, Tyler. Ashley and Dylan, um, three nerdy girls, like I say, they've been forced to go to summer camp and they don't want to go to summer camp because Tyler has just invented a lunar powered um, smartphone, a 3D holographic smartphone that she's dying to play with. Um, so they've all been forced to go to summer camp by their parents to do kind of healthy, fun outdoor activities and they don't want to go. Um, so that's the bit I'm going to read. Uh, their day one of the camp has just finished. They've done a lot of singing, a lot of climbing, a lot of messing around on the river and all those kind of things. And now they're back in their cabin, really, really tired. Hey guys, so I'm going to take you through how I go about starting to illustrate a book. So. What happens is once the book has been written, we so have some exa existing artwork, as you can see, the characters have already been designed because this is the second book in the series. Then what happens is a PDF is sent to me. Um, so it looks like this. We've got all the chapters in and you can see the sort of various gaps where all the artwork goes. So chapter four, I'm going to show you how I would go about drawing a picture for chapter four. Um, you can see the various bits in blue are bits where that relate to the uh, artwork and the sort of grey boxes are where the artwork's going to go. So I've got a kind of size of where it's going to be. So this is the picture I'm going to draw. It's Dylan st stood in front of Ashley and Tyler with dog ears on her head. OK, so I'm going to do a screen grab of that. Then I'm going to... Um, open that in uh, another app, another app called Procreate. Um, let's get rid of that app. There we are. I'm going to add insert photo. So there we go. So that is the template. So that's the screen grab from the PDF just drops into an A4 piece on Procreate. I'm going to enlarge that um, so the artwork can be as as big as it can be because whenever you do artwork it always gets reduced down because if you draw something small and it gets uh, blown up and made larger then it becomes sort of pixelated so you tend to draw big and then it gets shrunk down so at this point in the book um, yeah the app's gone wrong on the phone and Dylan has sort of got sort of 3D like snapchat um, ears but in real life so these are what the characters look like from the first book. Um, so you can sort of see, I need to make them exactly the same because they need to be exactly the same as the first book. So I've um, just got a little picture that was stuck in the corner. Um, so you can see uh, exactly, I can see exactly how the characters are gonna look. So Dylan is the one in the middle um, and she's gonna be sort of stood there looking happy and smiley with kind of the kind of Snapchat is on her head 
but they're kind of stuck on her head in real life and she doesn't know and and Tyler who is the girl on the right in the glasses uh, although they both have glasses um, she's the kind of narrator of the story she's going to be looking shocked and then Ashley the girl with the afro uh, she's my favorite character she's the coolest uh, is also going to be kind of looking shocked as well so I'm just going to move that over to that side start to draw so we've talked about how I use really simple shapes circles triangles those kind of things um i'll show you once we've got a sort of really rough pencil drawing how basically they're kind of like circles on top of triangles and squares and things like that so as you can see they've got the uh template behind me that gray box so that's where the artwork has to go i just put a little explanation mark because these guys are kind of worried so it helps me during my drawing if i'm kind of thinking oh how are they looking again oh yeah they're really shocked so i've got to remember that it's a little reminder of how it's supposed to be. There we go, just move the artwork in. Get rid of that grey box. So these are all on layers. So we've got the grey box on one layer, the white paper on another layer, the pencil drawing on another layer. That means that I can sort of adjust things. And when I do the sort of final link, um, I'm going to work over the top of it. I'll just show you these really simple shapes. So that's what the characters are basically made up of. But it's really important that they remain consistent. Here's the penciled rough um, finished characters. Make sure I'm kind of happy. Anything I'm not happy with, um, I can sort of adjust. I'm just making sure that the characters look the same. For instance, Tyler. Tyler Fitz has got four buttons on her dress. So we've got to make sure that there are four buttons make sure the colour looks right from picture to picture because if it starts seeing one picture's got three buttons it's not going to look so good and once I'm happy with the drawing happy with the pencil drawing then I'm going to reduce that transparency right down and work over the top of it with ink so now that the rough is finished um, let's get on with the story time and let's get on with the finished artwork I climb onto my bunk scratch a dash into the wall Day one done. I sigh. Just at that second, Ashley troops through the door. Mud on her face, eyes filled with pain. What's wrong with this world? I thought this was supposed to be a summer camp. Did I miss something? Did we tick the wrong box and somehow we join the Marines? Everything aches, including my ears, she sighs. Yeah, me too. How did that happen, I say, rubbing them. I think it's all the communal singing. Ashley shrugs. I'm going for a lie down and to wait for the sweet relief of death to come, she says. Do you have anything to eat? I want my last meal to be something more than berries. I've got a few bread rolls that I grabbed at lunch. Let me get them for you. You're a good friend, Tyler, Ashley says. Where's Dylan? She asks. I don't know, I answer, grabbing my bag from under my bunk. I saw her running away when the tambourines came out. Just at that second, there's a howl of wind from outside. I look out. Looks like we made it back to the cabin just in time, I say, seeing the trees swaying in the wind and the dark clouds creeping across the sky, almost covering the bright and full moon. Looks like a storm's coming in. Just at that moment, Ashley's right leg starts tap dancing by itself. That's right, tap dancing, but only in one leg. It's possibly the strangest thing I've ever seen. Are you all right? I ask. Oh, it's a bad storm, all right, Ashley says confidently. What the hell's the matter with you? How do you know? I ask aghast as she starts to hop around the cabin like she's trying to stamp out an imaginary fire. It's my leg. It starts doing this whenever there's a storm on its way. I call it my storm leg. You know how cows lie down in a field when it's going to rain? Well, this is the same, except without cows, and it's located in my leg. I've got to take a picture of this, I say. Where's my holographic phone? This will look amazing in 3D, I say, rifling around my case. Please, no publicity, Ashley begs. This is going to do my application for Harvard no good at all. Oh my, someone's been in here. There's no phone. Someone's stolen it. We've been robbed, I yell. Wait, can you hear something? Ashley hushes me, jumping to her feet, or her feet jumping to her, I'm not quite sure. I can hear something. At first, I hear nothing. Then I hear a strange chuckling and clicking sound. 
I think it's coming from the bathroom. Ashley points. We both creep over and listen. I think someone's in there, I whisper. Do you think it's the robber? Well, I do now, I say. Or maybe it's an axe murderer, Ashley whispers. Stop saying words, I whisper back. OK, after three, Ashley says. One, two, three. What are we supposed to do now? You weren't really specific. Oh, I meant storm the bathroom. All oh, right. One, two. Hey, guys, Dylan says, coming out of the door. What are you two doing sneaking around? Ah! Ashley and I cry. Well, I thought you were... We thought you were... Oh, never mind. Hey, is that my phone? I ask, looking in Dylan's hand. Yeah, I hope you don't mind. I was looking for a snack in your bag. When I spotted the phone, I just wanted a closer look at it. I was interested in the way you've plotted the user interface, Dylan says. But we heard laughing, Ashley says. I take the phone off Dylan and look at the screen. Oh, Dylan, I say, I thought you were better than this. You've been looking at those unicorn filters on that app again, haven't you? I'm sorry, I just really like unicorns. Look, she says, holding the phone in front of her, firing up the app. Suddenly the holographic ears and sparkly horn appear on Dylan's head in real life. And when she moves her head, the ears and horns move too. I have to admit, it looks pretty cool. You can make a fortune with this 3D phone, Tyler, Dylan says. Look, they have other animals too, cats. She presses a button on the screen and cute cat ears and whiskers appear on her face. Squirrel. She transforms again, spouting two large uh, front teeth and a big red fluffy tail. They have scary creatures too, like dinosaurs or a dog. But I think there's something wrong with the way it's using the lunar power, especially with a big full moon like tonight. You're basically designed a transformer as well. It can't cope with the supply. It's like using a power station to run a toaster off. Look, she says, grabbing the phone again. Well, it's only a prototype, I say. Please be careful. It's not stable yet. Yeah, sure, Dylan says, ignoring me, getting more and more excited. If you alter the digital signal processor by 10%, you should be able to adjust the power control setting. Just at that second, Ashley's legs begin to swing round and her hair goes all spiked. Oh my, the storm was very near. There's a huge clap of thunder and a flash of lightning. Rain begins to beat down on the windows. It's basically on top of us. Ashley warns. Yeah, anyway, like I was saying, the analogue and digital conversion rates are easy to change. Dylan, I yell, there's too much static from the storm. Turn it off. You might overload it. It's not used to using third party apps, I cry. I can see the phone beginning to light and bleep. The two aerials on top begin to shake. What? She yells. She can't hear from the noise of the rain, the thunderstorm and Ashley's leg thumping against the ground. Louder and louder it's getting. I feel like we're in the eye of the storm. You can feel it in your teeth. You can taste the electricity as the air becomes charged. And just when the tension becomes almost too unbearable, crack, a huge clap of thunder and lightning. For a few seconds, all I can hear is a high-pitched whistle. It's completely dark. I can smell slightly singed wood. We must have directly been hit by lightning. And then there's a sound, a terrible, terrible sound. Ow! Dylan, are you all right? I shriek, trying to get my bearings. I hold out my hands. I can feel something. Ow! I recognise the voice. It's Ashley. Are you OK? I yell. No, you just poked me in the nose, she snaps. Sorry. Dylan, where are you? I can't see a thing. What was that awful noise? Are you hurt? I grab the phone and pick it up. It's still glowing and I can use the light it's giving off as a torch. Through the screen, Ashley and I can see Dylan as she gets to her feet and looks at us. Are you okay? I ask. Dylan blinks, rubbing her head. The phone screen is a startled picture of Dylan with puppy ears. Just at that second, the lights come back on. Someone must have fixed the fuse, I say. The phone blinks on and off once again before finally bleeping and dying in my hands. Oh no, can it be repaired? Ashley asks. I don't know. Looks like the static from the storm blew out the components. I can smell them. They're burnt out completely. Oh, I'm sorry, Dylan says. I just wanted to play. Oh, it's OK. I'm sure we can fix it once we're home. I shriek. Once we're what? Dylan says, looking at me. 
I dart my eyes towards Dylan, willing Ashley to look over to her and see what I've just seen. Once we're high home, Dylan repeats helpfully. I think she means home. It's pronounced home, Tyler. H-O-M-E. Ashley looks over at her. Her eyes widen for a split second and then she looks back at me. We both look at Dylan once again. There she is standing in front of us with dog ears attached to the top of their head. Not on the phone, not a holographic image from the phone, but actually on her head in real life. Our best friend is a walking, talking human puppy. And worst of all, she has absolutely no idea. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that story and I hope you enjoyed seeing me inking. Um, if you're interested in buying the book and seeing what happens next, what happens to Dylan with those ears and how they slowly transform under the full moon into a werewolf, um, then there is a link below if you want to buy the book. But that should have given you a better idea of what happens in my job, how I take a finished manuscript and do the artwork and how that gets turned and sent off and turned into finished artwork that ends up in the finished book. Until next time, keep doodling, keep reading lots, and I shall see you very soon on Doodle Do It. See you soon, guys. Bye.